Hi, this is a TDS-654C, Tektronix Digitizing Oscilloscope. This one's called a real-time oscilloscope because it can sample 5 billion samples per second per channel. So each channel at the same time. This means that it doesn't have to do any repetitive waveform re reconstruction of a signal, um, building databases, etc. It just simply sees it at real time, even a 500 megahertz signal will still be captured 10 samples per um, you know, sine wave etc. This is a fairly late production for the, 700, for the 600 series. 600C is what this is. So you can see that it has tantalum capacitors, not the really nasty electrolytic capacitors, the surface mount that would fail and flood the boards with um, electrolytic and cause unpredictable shorts and so on and so forth. We see over here that we have our Dallas semiconductor. Um, these are the NVRAM. You can see the little indentation of the battery in there. This 1250Y is, is the one that if you start getting your your SPC goes away, your signal path compa compensation goes away, when you turn it on the next day and it tells you it needs to be ran and so forth, this chip is dying. This one has your clock, so if it can't keep time, this one is dying. With this one's death, you may lose options if you don't know how to restore them. Um, pretty clean, well-made boards. Sometimes on the C's, I don't know why. Probably the D's, I mean, I think they're the same processor board. Sometimes the video chip over here fails or the solder work around it. I'm not, I haven't really figured out which one it is for sure. But I can tell you if you probe around on you hit something wrong, it's dead. That chip won't work no more. Then you have to go back to here and take it off of your VGA and put like an LCD display. I've done a bunch of those up here. And this has, these are your fast samplers down here. This is a really nice looking board. Um, not too complicated. Well, it is way too complicated, but um, but very straightforward looking to the eye. Well done. Excellent workmanship, as it should be, since you know, I don't know what these things sold for. Probably fifteen thousand dollars, not even ten years ago. Um, this one right now, I repaired the acquisition system on it. It had some issues there. Those have gone away. Seem to have anyway. I still need to calibrate it, but the display is not bright enough on this and is blurry. And usually blurry, I mean, it could be that the LCD shutter is keeping the light from getting through and so on and so forth, but usually when you start getting duller and duller and duller, it just means your display needs to be replaced. Um, it might be possible to it might be possible to rejuvenate the display. Sometimes people do stuff like that, but they don't always last for a long time. I, I just haven't seen anyone do it, and I haven't, and I haven't, I haven't taken the time to explore that myself. There's just easier ways to do it for me. But anyhow, I'll show you a regular boot procedure. This isn't usually a problem keeping the cover off of these. Um, really hot day, maybe it'd make a difference. I also keep a little half shell that I use to throw over the top. Just uh, if I want to do long term running and I want to be able to walk away. The hourglass there should be quite a bit brighter than it is. And the line is very faint and you can see it's blurry. Um, I have adjusted already the um, brightness on the side here and that's about as good as it gets and that's pretty dull so almost certainly the display is shot on this thing. Okay since I'm working with um, a camera I went ahead and disconnect most of the connections on this and these are pretty easy to take apart really. Not really high risk or anything. You don't have to be particularly nervous about working on them. You can see I do have an anti-static work station here on the desk -o. wrist strap that I sometimes forget to put on grounding strap just because my power cord is now off of the thing but notice I have a carpet not a good idea but I was not permitted to tear the carpet out or I would have so 
drive here is pushing against. Sometimes I run into that. And so that makes a little bit, you just kind of wiggle and wedge it, wedge it up. When you're actually going to install this back, you make sure that you have the board low so it goes into that lower notch and it slides in. The first couple of times you do it, it's pretty tricky, but um, it's really kind of easy. The reason I'm taking the processor board off is because you have to be able to access the um, CRT board, CRT driver board here, and so I might as well just go ahead and do that. Plus it gives you an opportunity to look at your power supply that's under here. You never know. might be some leaky electrics and you can do something about that before it destroys it. Okay, a whole slew of screws later and a lithium-ion battery equipped drill and this guy is ready to be open. Batteries on this tool really last. I can go a couple of months. down here. So what do we got? Ooh, that ain't very good. Look at that. That would cause a short. Bad surprise. Probably went here or something. I don't know. I've never seen one fall off like that, so I don't really remember where it went. Probably something like that, though. So we got your low voltage power supply here. Nice shot of a very late production um, front panel. No electrolytics, just the tantalums. Black on this one, a lot of times are yellow. Um, no obvious oil slicks from a electrolytic. I see these guys die up front. These um, transistors or whatever those things are, those things die. These clamping diodes here, they're kind of a funky diode. I forget what they do. They, um, those things a lot of times will short out when it gets electrical surge and then they just simply, um, the thing don't work until you pull one out and put a new one in. Um, and this is um, your driver board. It does have the um, trace rotation here, so I can use this driver board, but you still have to have the cover off to get your stuff disconnected. Um, you can tell this one's a real late production because the late production ones, I started putting an additional grounding strap right on the back here, going to the case, so apparently that gave them just a little bit more performance. You'd see that on like a 694, which is a high bandwidth scope, or a 684, which is a 1 gigahertz scope that's virtually identical. To the scope and, and of course this model you'd also see it on all the 700 D's and the 500 D's as well um, so now we just basically disconnect connectors so that we can slide the CRT out a ways be able to get access to it but undo, undo as much of a tangle as we can And the one hand thing isn't helping. Um, this one I want to get to. There we are. And I'm going to leave this board in place, if at all possible. There's no point in disconnecting all of that stuff. Usually when this thing starts sliding around lightly, it's good enough. And I want to get that piece out. Our trace rotation connector, which should have the black towards the center of the scope. There we are. Okay. I think that's all of them. Now let's see if I can do this with one hand. I like to reach behind the front panel, kind of poke up with my fingers to get it up. You don't want it to shoot too fast, or you can screw your flex connector up. And there is a late production front panel. It'll work actually with any TDS 500, 600, 700 of any generation. 
except for the ones with InstraView just because it's missing a little button right there. The facilities are actually under there, it's just it's not being used on this one, it's not locked out. So there's that. So now we gotta get the this front bezel, no not front bezel, what do they call this a flex connector or something like that, I forget. The surround. And to do that you want to take your floppy drive off. And then you can, I mean you can squeeze it under here, but um it's not in your best interest usually. It doesn't really save any time, might as well just knuckle down and take stuff apart. Okay, remove a few screws and the front flex panel comes off. Um, real common for these little Alright, between the um, flex panel or surround panel, whatever it's called, is your display. There's actually a couple of screws under here that you remove, which I've done. And so now the display is able to be pulled out of the unit, with the exception of you do need to disconnect the high voltage lead from the CRT. And it's important that you have your grounding there so you don't get zapped. And what we're going to do is you're going to coax the assembly out. And first of all, making sure that that guy is free. A bunch of things are going to try to stop you in your effort, but you're going to poke it out always until you're able. You can't really see it. Let me, let me see if I can adjust the light here. So you got this little cover here for the high voltage lead. And again, you want to take an instrument, touch it against the metal case, poke it under there, and have it touch the leads there so that any charge that's present in this is sent to ground. Okay, the new display is in, so all I need to do is put the connectors back, put the thing back together. Except for the disk drive I'm going to leave off for now because you have better access to the display controls to do any final brightness adjustments. I expect this thing will be quite bright. I need to turn it down. Um, so it's time to put it back together. There's where that goes. Okay, let's see what we got. It is pretty bright. Let's see, is that the one that I want to... Oh, that guy. Yeah. I don't want there to be that backlight there. I want it to be a dark background. That's pretty freaking sweet. Let me get one more hole forward. Sorry about the camera. down a little bit. Okay. Comes to life. 13.1 F2F. That's... Oh, I need to adjust the trace rotation a little bit. It's tilting to the left. That's no problem. I don't have the permanent case on it yet. Uh, shift utility. Interesting, it didn't come up with the Cal initiation error. I'll calibrate it anyway. I don't know how well that focuses this close, but that is a pretty sweet looking display right there. I think I will call that good put the drive back in, put it back together, and calibrate it.